Hi, so I'm here with Jer Casey from Ireland, and I'm so glad that you came to talk with me about this today. I saw your presentation at the conference that we had, I don't know if that was in April, um, the Nolative Conference, and I was so intrigued by the research that you had done around the ESR points, the emotional stress release points, because they're things that we use all the time every day when doing kinesiology work and yet I had never seen any actual scientific evidence that said that they worked. So I was really thrilled to see your studies and um, I'm really glad that we get a chance to talk about it right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for having me okay. um, and it's nice to talk about it and share it. So can you just tell us a little bit about the experiments that you ran for anyone who wasn't at the conference and therefore didn't hear you talk about it previously. Yeah, sure. So what we what we did was um, I was working at the time in Queen's College Medical um, Center in Nottingham in, in the UK as a student. I was um, I was studying medical health science, and um, we had to develop and design research projects and um, you know it, it looked like a great opportunity to check out some of the kinesiology information that I'd been teaching people for years telling them it worked because the muscle test was giving me that feedback but it was really nice to just get some uh, scientific evidence um, there'd been lots of empirical evidence that it worked and people felt better but there hadn't been any hard scientific evidence um, so that, that was the great opportunity for me to go and do that. Um, and I had an interest in blood pressure um, and hypertension because so many people suffer from it and stress. And, it, you know, it, we knew it was causing a lot of problems for many, many people all over the world. And, um, you know, I had had evidence empirically that my mother's blood pressure seemed to come down when we did ESR. So now it was the time to, to get people together and do a study. And uh, that was my opportunity to do it. Okay. So, I mean, what were the results of that? Like, what do you feel are the most important kind of takeaways from the research that you did? Okay. So it was quite interesting because as students, a lot of us were working on the same project and using different methods. Um, I was the only person using any kinesiology methods or you know, what we call emotional stress, stress release in touch for health or you know, frontal holding points in um, applied kinesiology. Um, and um, this was a bit of a stretch for some of my lecturers to say that you, know, you put your hand on your forehead and there's going to be an effect. And so that was, that was a hard sell for them. They didn't, they didn't buy into that at all. So um, other people were doing Tai Chi. There was somebody doing uh, information. He was using Red Bull to see how much they could raise their blood pressure by drinking Red Bull. So there was lots of other, somebody else was sitting in a freezer. So it was this, so we were, we were looking for people who had stresses and when they thought of them, it would raise their blood pressure and we were able to measure that and that was not a stretch for anybody everybody knew and it was accepted that if you have stresses and you think about a stress your blood pressure goes up and that was you know, that was acceptable but putting your hand on your forehead and seeing would it go down was not you know what people thought was the norm or acceptable and that was the one that we wanted to prove so what we did was we we did the experiment where we had people at a base level and measure their blood pressure several times over so many minutes and then we had them so we got a base level an average and then we had them think about a stress and we watched the blood pressure go up and we did it several times again to get an average and then we had them think of a stress that we knew was stressing them because it was looking a model and um excuse me <coughs> Pull their ESR points and uh, measure their blood pressure and we were um, blown away to find that it was kind of lower than the normal 
baseline resting level for them. And this started to fascinate the lecturers and they were kind of, oh, what are you doing? Hang on, let me see this, you know, and, and that. And uh, that's the interest in, you know, we went on to do enough studies then you must have a minimum of 10 people and 10 results to do a p-test. And initially they didn't think we would get, um, you know, a good p-test, a scientifically significant one. So the rules is if it's 0.5, it's significant. If it's 0.0, if it's 0.01, it's, you know, very significant. And if it's 0.001, it's um, highly significant. And we got seven, zero, seven zeros, point seven, yeah, point zero, 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 seven, which was, you know, nobody thought that we were going to get that, and we did, and that was just, that blew everybody out of the water, including me. I mean, I didn't think we'd get that great results, but it was a phenomenal result to get, and it was held true for diastolic, systolic, and pulse rate, you know, so that was, that was the, uh, and it was a very simple experiment, you know, it was, we kept it simple, it was, you just measured blood pressure, you know, basically with, um, a stress and then with the stress in ESR. Okay. And it seems to me, I remember you saying um, when I heard you present the results before that you had the people holding the points themselves, right? So that you could rule out any yes. effect of like yeah. human contact. Well, one of the things you've got to do, yeah, yeah. One of the things you've got to do is punch holes in your own thesis or your hypothesis first. So I have to look at how people will criticize it. And one of the things that was kind of going to be an obvious one is that if somebody comes, when you're upset and they put their hand on your shoulder or your knee or on your arm, it's going to calm you down and it's a comforting touch. So that was the, the first thing, you know, was that the, the, that would happen. So to rule that out, we had them hold their own points for that reason. Um, and that, um, I mean, we had uh, other struggles, you know, sometimes when people are stressed, they cried and we were requested to stop the experiment immediately because you can't have people crying. Um, so we had, let, let me not be so sexist, but it was a male interpretation of women crying. You can't, you know, it was unethical to have people crying and, and you know, it took a while, but we said, actually, they're just releasing um, and that so then we had to kind of do other ones where people didn't cry and they still had the same re results and to do it with some men um, and that and of course we looked at you know certain things that stress women don't stress men and things that stress men don't stress women you know so mm -hmm. it, you know we had to look at what actually stresses people yeah I mean men get much more high blood pressure in cars than women do <laughs> And women get much more um, high blood pressure and stress with family uh, family issues than men do. Now, I mean, that's not across the board. And you can't, you know, you can't wipe it up, but it just seemed to be a trend. Right. Okay. So this research, um, you know, I know from our conversation earlier that you actually did this study in like 2005, you said, right? Yeah. So what yeah. led up to that? And then why release it now instead of 15 years ago? <laughs> okay, so the, the, the ambition was probably a lot higher 15 years ago than it is today. <laughs> um, I was studying, I was uh, planning at that time because of pressure from the university to go on and turn this into a PhD study. So the data was kept under wraps and, and, and that was one of the reasons. But I suppose the, the, the opportunity was I was in university and I had the labs and I had the information. And also I'd had conversation with John B who was really looking for scientific evidence uh, for touch for health particularly. Um, and he knew that there was lots of air empirical evidence. In other words, if everybody does the same thing and gets the same results all over the world to the same recipe, it becomes empirical. But there was no hard scientific evidence. And I think he 
really wanted to see some of that. Um, so I finished my study in July 2005, and he died in early August. I think it was about a week, a week or two in it before he died that we'd actually just finished, and I'd sent him the results. Whether he ever read them or not, I have no clue. But I'm sure he knew that there was he knew there was something going on, and I'd been in touch with him about it. So um, I was I was delighted to get that done just for him at that time. And then, um, you know, 15 years later, I don't have any ambition to do a PhD or to do any further study on it. So we decided just to give it out to the kinesiology community and say, look, if anybody else wants to keep going and working on it, that's great. But um, and I have been working and I've continued to study it, but um, not not interested in putting it forward for, for more complex study. So, I mean, you guys had such, you had such good results with this study. Yeah. Um, why, why do you think we don't do more of this actual research in our field? Is there a bias against it? Do you think there's just too many roadblocks? What gets in our way? Well, to get labs and to laboratories, I mean, we only, we did it also with Douglas uh, bags and respiration, but to go into a lab and you know, get Douglas bags and a lab technician full time on that. You're talking about several thousand um, euros to do that. The, the the price is probably prohibitive. Um, and in a lot of research studies like that, they are sponsored, mm -hmm. and nobody is going to sponsor you to have a method that's going to reduce blood pressure without drugs, because the main sponsors are going to be drugs companies, and they don't want to know. You're more likely to get a bullet in the post than funds for something like that. Um, you know, they, they, it, it's not a popular study because it's not going to make money for anybody. Right. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons it's hard to get funding because we're using natural methods without drugs. And as I say, nobody's going to make any great money on it. Um, on that. And, and the labs are incredibly expensive. Okay. Um, all right. So, oh, there's people on the background. Sorry, there's somebody <laughs> behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, okay, so if other people were wanting to conduct research, if this was uh, an ambition of anybody who's looking at this, are there resources that you would suggest or what, how do we get started with such things? Okay, so I think the, the, the best thing to do is to take really good notes, to have like a science notebook and notice everything and be really honest and then have somebody pull it apart and then pull, you know, punch every hole you can in it yourself. Um, look at all, because people are going to criticize it. No matter what you do, they're going to criticize it. And you need to be your own worst critic in this one uh, or your best critic, whatever. And, um, you know, just look at everything that they can say and see can you counteract it. It's like simple things like don't put your hands on them, let them do them themselves so that, that, you know, that you take that out of the equation. So you want to take really good notes and you want to... Um, document everything meticulously, you know, dates, times, time everything, what equipment you're using, you know, all of that, just if you are using equipment. If you're not, just it's very easy to do um, scientific studies. Um, it's much easier to do a null hypothesis than it is to do a hypothesis. It's, it's almost impossible to prove a hypothesis, but you, it's much easier to prove a null hypothesis. In other words, so I used a null hypothesis. I said that holding ESO would have absolutely no effect on blood pressure and cardiac parameters. Therefore, if it does, I was wrong. What you want to be, you always want to be wrong in a null hypothesis. Whereas if I said it has an effect, I'd have to prove for millions of people or certainly hundreds of thousands to say, oh gosh, it does have effect because, you know, so it's easier to do the null hypothesis and say it will have no effect. And then if it has effect, you only have to break a certain amount of numbers and then it becomes scientific. And you can do a p-test and, you know, that, that makes it very easy. So the, the first thing is don't try and prove something, try and prove it doesn't work. 
because um, that's easier. And, you know, if you like, we're manipulating science, but that's what scientists do. You know, it, you know it's, it's a study in, in a box, if, if you like. It, you're, you're putting in parameters, whereas if you just put a hypothesis, like you've no parameters and it's very, very hard to prove because you're saying at what stage does it become a proof? So it's much easier if you put in the parameters, box it in, and then say, well, it won't have any effect. And then if it does, then you were wrong, which is what, where you want to be. All right. So what is next for you? Are you conducting new research? She you said you're not going for your doctorate now, but... Um, no, no, no. Um, well, we, we've done some... The follow-up on that has been quite interesting. We've done it. We've got lots of people to use it. It has shown, I mean, one of the things it has shown is that it does reduce blood pressure. And that's a, a given. We have that. We have the scientific proof on that. What it doesn't do is it doesn't maintain it. So that would be the next thing. How do you maintain blood pressure? So for people who say, for instance, are suffering from hypertension, if the blood pressure spikes because they're stressed, absolutely, ESO will get it down. No questions. But if they've ongoing blood pressure, it doesn't seem to maintain it. It'll take it down and it takes it out of a dangerous level quite quickly. And we're talk when I say quite quickly, I'm talking about five minutes. Mm -hmm. It will reduce your blood pressure. But if the stress is ongoing, unless you do something to deal with the stress, the blood pressure will spike again. So we need to look at maybe better ways of giving people the tools to reduce their stress to recognize it, reduce it, and then go from there so that it's not spiking again, you know? Because otherwise you're gonna have a lot of people with their hands stuck on their foreheads for a long time, you know? And that's not going to be practical. And people do it naturally, you know, when people get stressed, they straight away go there. Yeah, it's an instant, it's an, it's an almost instinctive reaction, you know? So obviously in nature, we already knew that there was something there, you know? The other study I'd really like to see done, um, is to perhaps touch a different part of the body and particularly the face and see does that have an effect on blood pressure like so to do a control so a lot of people would hold their chin for instance when they're thinking does that have a, an effect you know those kind of studies that's what i'd like to see to keep going with it and you know just have a comparison right Okay, well, if it's um, all right with you, we'll put, when we post the, the video here, um, I'll post the link to your website so people can actually yeah. look at all of the research and see uh, all of the conclusions and everything like that and read it for themselves and utilize it. Yeah. Perfect. That would be great. Anything, anything else that you want to share about this? Well, if anybody wants to get involved in doing some further study, I mean, with my university, they were looking for four and a half thousand people in a study. And I think that was probably one of the bigger factors. So the, the initial thing was to do 1500 people with ESR and blood pressure as we did, and then do 1500 people with a different point and then do 1500 people where you did nothing. Right. So you had some kind of a control group. Um, that's just a huge undertaking and a huge expense. And uh, it, that's going to also take a long time. We're still documenting it. Um, we're really happy for anybody who wants to join in that and put it together. Um, we can give it to the kinesiology community, whoever wants it. Um, you know, th that if people just take the method, the method is on the paper, and use it and see what their results are and email me and tell me, you know, that they've had it. I mean, there's people from Russia as a result of the things want to get involved in the study and do it, and, you know, things. But it would be nice to see them doing other points. I mean, there's people talking about the tip of the nose point, which is supposed to be, you know, a sensitive point. People hold their chins when they're thinking. People hold their cheeks. Um, there's also a stomach... Um, vascular point here as well does that have the same effect as here you know for on the ramus of the jaw and um, that's also a, a vascular for the stomach meridian does that have exactly the same things you know there's lots of stuff you could do with this and and see does it have an effect on the parameters 
Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about all of the applications of that as we're, as we're talking. And I just yeah. am so happy to see some new research on this. So maybe yeah. not new research, but new to me research. Um, yeah. Because as you were saying, you know, we've had these methods and these techniques for a really long time, but they don't have the respect of maybe the larger community, the people outside of the group who use them all the time, because they yeah. seem too strange, right? That, that yeah, yeah. Like this would make a, a measurable difference. So yeah. the more of that that we have and the more of it that we can share, the better, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I was doing my study, there was a guy there who was a Tai Chi master and he was able to put himself almost comatose um, with Tai Chi. And yet when he did that, his blood pressure didn't drop one iota. Um, so we then have to kind of look at why, you know, he was still, he was in a content, you know, meditative state and it didn't reduce his blood pressure and yet holding the ESR points did significantly. And he had no significant change at all. And um, it looks like the, the key there is adrenaline. So you can be absolutely still, but still your adrenaline can be running very high, you know, internally, which means that your blood pressure won't reduce. It's like, the, you know, the possum effect where you freeze. Mm -hmm. It seems to be like that. Where ESR, while it has, we know now it has a, um, an effect on the vascular system, um, it probably would need some more research and you'd probably need to take blood products and test them at various levels rather than just doing blood pressure to see does it have effect on your on the adrenaline levels in the blood and if the adrenaline nor adrenaline are, are changing you know or your epinephrine um is changing chemically that would be a really nice study for somebody to do wonderful yeah that would be cool so that the, because i i suspect that the reason we got the results is probably more to do with it adrenaline than it is to do the vascular. That would make sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also why it doesn't hold, right? Because then as soon as you yes. think about the stressful situation again, yes, it goes up again, again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so I think I think there's there's a bigger study to be done there, you know, I mean, um, all touch faults has ever claimed is that when you think of a stress and you hold the SR points, the body calms down. And we also knew that the stomach points were to do with vasculars from um, the original 1930s research from Bennett, that they had done that. Um, but he, he, looked, he did, you know, use a fluoroscope to measure the blood and to see where it went. Uh, and he's just doing vascular, he's doing blood flow, but what's changing the blood flow and I would be interested to see what the adrenaline levels are if you did blood tests. Cool, yeah. Mm. Well, so I suspect that's the difference. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, and yes we will, um, this is going to be in the magazine and we will attach all of the research here so anybody has oh, questions they can direct them to you later. Absolutely, and everybody wants to do some research studies and they want help with designing them. I'd be very happy to help there too. Amazing. We might be in touch on that. All right, thank <laughs> okay. you.